Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. And welcome to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. I'm Susan. And I'm Lisa. Welcome. Hi. Uh, today we're going to be taping from the Rensselaer Rail Station. So you may hear some uh, PA system announcing a train, but we're just going to keep on going. We're happy to be in the studio and love that there's a lot of energy here and uh, we can talk with our exciting guest today. Yeah, it's really a thrill to be here, and we really want to thank you for watching. Today is a very exciting day for us. We have a wonderful guest. We're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to both of our hearts. We've yeah. touched on it at a number of other other shows. We love so let's talking, spill the about, beans. talking about education. Higher education. That's right. And so our guest today is Dr. Nancy Zimfer, who is the Chancellor of the State University of New York. And the reason we wanted to do this show is because, you know, as we, I already said, we we have a lot of passion for education, but also because SUNY is up to really big things, and yeah. we really feel it's important for people to know about uh, all of the amazing uh, projects that are underway in yeah. the SUNY system. Especially because we're both SUNY babies, right? SUNY yes. graduates, I guess, is the way to say it. <laughs> SUNY so. alum, right? SUNY alum, right. <laughs> okay. So uh, today we're going to be talking about something called the six big ideas mm -hmm. and we're going to also be talking about some of the individual projects that um, SUNY is engaged in and mm -hmm. one of them that I know a little bit about uh, is the um, Cradle to Career Initiative mm -hmm. which I um, is happening in Albany. It's called the right. Albany Promise. And right. so we're happening all over the state in various different programs. The different programs, but the one I know a little bit about is the Albany Promise. So yeah. we're very excited to be talking about that. And so in just a few minutes, we're going to be back with our guest, Dr. Nancy Zimfer. Welcome back to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. And today, as I said, we're very excited to have Dr. Nancy Zimfer, the Chancellor of SUNY, here with us today to talk about the six big ideas that are part of the strategic plan for SUNY. So without further ado, thank you so much for being with us. Welcome. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, uh, great. Well, we want to start by letting people know a little bit about you. So can you tell us how you came to be the Chancellor of SUNY? Well, uh, it didn't. It wasn't a long, uh, dark night. But uh, <laughs> I, I first uh, was a teacher, and uh, like a lot of women who choose teaching as a career, my mother was a teacher. My father had been a teacher. I had this legacy of, I and a great English teacher in high school, and so I began teaching. I thought I was going to teach 12th grade Shakespeare, but I ended up teaching in a one-room school, in the foothills of the Ozarks everything for grades mm -hmm. five through eight. So wow. if that doesn't get you ready to be chancellor of the SUNY system, <laughs> I don't know what does. So uh, one thing led to another and I got really interested in teaching teachers. I mm. uh, decided to get my PhD and become a professor so that I could really work with teachers over many, many years to come. Mm. Uh, mm. Like always happens, you look around and you say, well, I see there's a dean here of this college. I'd kind of like to do that eventually. And so there is a bit of a career ladder in academics. And so I went from a professor and a faculty member to associate dean to dean. Uh, when I was at Ohio State, they had a title called executive dean. And so I was dean of other deans, which 
doesn't always work very well. You yeah. know, they're very independent, the dean yes. of business. They the don't dean take of, supervision very they, well. They do not take to it well, and it was engineering and, you know, all the professional schools. But it taught me a lot about managing academics at the all university level. And, uh, you know, I took a look, good look at what university presidents do. And this is sounding a lot easier than it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm I sure. became a chancellor at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And different universities use different titles. So now I'm a chancellor again, but I went to the University of Cincinnati as a president mm -hmm. and now here at the State University of New York. So it was uh, a long and varied pathway, but I couldn't be happier to be where I am. Oh, we yeah. couldn't be happier to have you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank now, you. Tell us about this process for. Um, you know, the change that, that you, you're you all engaged in is so exciting. Tell us how that came about. We're talking about the six big the ideas. Six big yeah. ideas. And we'll yeah. talk more about that. But we found that the, the process for how it kind of developed was really kind of interesting in and of itself. Well, I'm a big believer that process really matters. And I sometimes say, you know, this is not Evita Perone on the balcony issuing my vision of where the State University of New York ought to go. And it's uh, 60 years old. Uh, yeah. The Board of Trustees of SUNY said, come and help lead a visioning process. So uh, mm. a little bit unexpected, even on my part, I said that I thought the first thing I ought to do was uh, to visit the campuses of which we have 60. Four. Right. So at Milwaukee and Cincinnati, you could pretty much visit the campus in a golf cart in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this ended up taking 95 days yeah. and 7,500 miles in a Chevy Tahoe. And, and 64, 64, really all over. I mean, if you look from, at the map, it's all over. It truly is. In fact, we are 30 miles from every New Yorker. Yeah. So it was Long Island, five campuses. It was in the boroughs of Manhattan, in Westchester County, uh, the North Country, the Southern Tier, wow. Central New York, Western New York. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how I got there, and I can't direct traffic, <laughs> but I know I was there. We spent about four hours uh, at each campus, and yeah. you can learn a lot in four hours. Yes. You yeah. talk to the president, of course, to the students, the faculty the supporters in the community, uh, all the staff. Mm -hmm. And so what started to happen is that mm. after about the eighth or ninth visit, and this took the whole summer of 2009, we began to see patterns. Mm. And the biggest pattern that just shouted out at us was that SUNY was playing an incredible role in New York's economic vitality. Absolutely. And at that point in 09, Mm -hmm. Who knew New York's economic revitalization and recovery? Yeah. And as always, having been a public education person and believing in the public mission of higher education, mm -hmm. it seemed to me and to many, many, yeah. many of the stakeholders I spoke with that SUNY's highest calling was to do something great for the state of New York. So we eventually, torturously, finally decided to call this plan the power of SUNY. That's and wonderful. We talk about that a lot. And mm -hmm. as alumni of SUNY, you are the power of SUNY. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and it's OK to say that. Yes. And so uh, like all great, big, audacious ideas, though, it was too big to push up the hill all by itself. We decided through countless conversations with representatives of all of our constituencies that we ought to break that down into a set of ideas. Mm -hmm. Y6, uh, it's kind of Goldilocks, not too many, not too few. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, it doesn't have a science behind yeah. it. But we did settle on six themes that we thought could right. really drive our work. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're teaching students, we're doing research, we've always been community servants, but we were turning it up a notch. Mm -hmm. What could we do that we could really hold ourselves accountable to? Mm -hmm. And um, as we were talking earlier, how could we keep the diversity of our constituent groups mm -hmm. in the forefront all right, the time right. we're doing this work? So I'd be yeah. glad to yeah. recount the six, <laughs> which I can do <laughs> <And> forwards <laughs> or backwards, whichever sure. way And we're going like. to get into that. But you know, one thing that Lisa and I, as we were prepping for the show, and we, typically we never prep for the show, we prep for you, so that's a compliment. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, you know, we were, I we were, <laughs> <laughs> no, we were saying that when I, what we really loved about it was that it really sets up uh, public academia as a partner with government, with business, with NGO, the non-governmental organizations, to, to, to bring New York to the next level yeah. as a yeah. leader, not just in the country, but in the world. Well, you're really. so right. And I think this image of the ivory tower, mm -hmm. uh, that we have a gate around our compound, 
is, is so not who we are. Yeah. And the concept of being in service to the state mm -hmm. is just such a beautiful, powerful way to think about our work. Yeah. And the three million alumni that we have, mm -hmm. many of whom live in New York. Yeah. So it really does feel comfortable. It, it feels really transformational. And I know a lot of people throw that word around. But mm -hmm. for me, you know, the fact that it's, it's not just uh, putting a Band-Aid on a yeah. you know, hemorrhage or yeah. something. It's really coming at it from a whole nother perspective. And for me, that's the difference in transformation work mm -hmm. is that it's, it's new eyes, it's new view, it's right. not the same old. And I loved how you did all the town meetings and you had all right. the folks involved yeah. and the transparency of it. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, yeah. not coming down right. from on high, these yeah. are our six yeah. big yeah. ideas. Right. Right. Exactly. But what yeah. do you think are the six well, big ideas? Well, and how are you going to get the work done if people don't own it? So mm -hmm. we had leadership from our students and faculty and staff mm -hmm. and community leaders who co-chaired conversations. They're still working in teams. They may think they were going to graduate from <laughs> doing this work, but since these ideas are very ambitious and hard to achieve, like in an energy smart New York, lowering our carbon footprint, we aren't going to do that overnight. No. But what we also did was set some goals, yeah. targets, and energy is a good example of could we in the next 10 years reduce our carbon footprint by as much as 30% and then every year not only measure our progress, but put it on our website mm -hmm. and hope mm -hmm. that the media picks it up. Mm -hmm. And one of my hidden, now it won't be so hidden theories <laughs> of leadership is, <laughs> don't tell anybody, if you can get the media to say, really, you're going to do that? Mm -hmm. We'll be back next year to see yes. if you did. Right. Great. And you also go inside and you say, what am I going to do? Tell the media we've changed our mind. We're not going to lower our carbon no. footprint? Right. No. Right. So it's all a mix of being ambitious and aspirational, having a lot of partners, and then holding ourselves accountable. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things you said in one of the things I read was we're not moving the goalposts. Yeah. No matter what, right. we are not right. moving the goalposts, right. meaning that you're not, you know, if you're we not making it, we're going to we're going to figure out another way. You right. know, this may not be the pathway, that right. may be the pathway, but we're not moving the goalposts, and I really admire that. Well, the other thing I heard people say is, let me get this straight. You are going to set goals for which you do not have ultimate control. As you've noticed, mm. city does not supply energy for the state of That's New York. Right. But we're such a big consumer. Uh, we do not provide health care for the entirety of the state of New York, but for a healthier New York, which is one of our ideas, preparing more doctors, for high need areas is something we can do. So maybe we have a, a proxy or an instrumental goal that will help New York get to the big goal because we don't control the entire environment. So I guess uh, when I was asked that, I said, I guess you're right. We are going to hold ourselves accountable for things that we don't totally control, mm -hmm. but to partner, we right. can. Right. But and the thing that you did was you said we're responsible. We mm -hmm. have a stake in this we and we're responsible. Right. Right. We're not waiting for the government. We're not waiting for someone to tell yeah. us. We're saying this is right. how it's going to go. And the state invests in us. Yeah. And our students invest in us. Mm -hmm. And our donors invest in right. us. And they deserve a return on their investment. Yeah. And that's how we thought about and it. And that really is what a partnership is. Is er, right. you know Each partner is 100% right. responsible for the success. Right. So Absolutely. let's drill down and get into it a little I bit. Know. I mean, you've touched on many of them, um, but so let's talk about the first one, which is to revitalize the economy, which is a huge undertaking well, right I mean, now. That's sort of like the whole goal, but we broke it down and said, we know we need to be more entrepreneurial. We need to have more of our students working with creative, innovative investigators, researchers in the private sector. Yeah. So we've set up innovation hubs that help us connect better with mm -hmm. business. It's still real really hard to get academics and entrepreneurs in the same room. Mm -hmm. It's apparently not in the Silicon Valley, but it's <laughs> a little harder here yeah. because we're not used to it and it's not as fluid. Mm -hmm. But that with these incubators and funding innovation and, and making our uh, intellectual property protection more fluid and transparent right. are and all the vehicles. And the SUNY startup uh, was one about Right, exactly. About. Trying yeah. to invest in bright ideas and then draw investors to sustain. This is everybody's challenge, but every one of our students can be an entrepreneur. Sure. And in fact, uh, at UAlbany, uh, we have a dean of business who, who just every minute thinks about how to instill more entrepreneurship in our students. And I think ultimately we'd be happy if every student, all 465,000 of our students, had to have at least one innovation entrepreneurship mm. experience. So that's 
go one among six and they are all equals, but just to break down this big hub of what is economic revitalization, certainly it's about small and medium-sized businesses and young people creating their own businesses. Which will with, create more jobs. Right. Which exactly, will create, and it's all uh, about the jobs. Uh, you know, and they say that the, um, that the small businesses are really the uh, the gas or the, the engine, the engine. Uh, yeah, you exactly. know, of economic and so that's revitalization. Where, and we're doing one thing under the title SUNY Works, which is mm -hmm. more students in paid internships yes. and co-op. Yeah. Co co yes. uh, and we know if you do that, you tend to graduate on time, which most mm -hmm. parents would mm -hmm. really appreciate because mm -hmm. you're in a structured schedule. Uh, you are paid, so you pay back your tuition and you don't take on extraordinary debt mm -hmm. and the ratio of students who get a job offer in a mm -hmm. place where they've mm -hmm. interned mm -hmm. is really really high That's so great. what what I like about the plan is after you get over the conceptual big idea what are you going to do right, what, exactly. what are you what are the three things you're going to actually implement to make a dream come true. And, and that's, that's what I, I liked we about it, it too. Yeah. They were they were, they were real. Beyond. They were yeah. real. It was not it was just real stuff. And you yeah. can count how many interns do you have then? That's how right. many programs do you have where you're working with engineering firms and you or architectural firms yeah. or even interns in the nonprofit world. This is very important. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I like the next one you talk about uh, a healthier New York. And one of the things I read that you that was in the um, strategic plan was the health of New York is essential to our economic success. And there's something about that that rang so true for me on all kinds of levels, not just you know how much money we spend on Medicaid right. and all that kind of stuff, but just in general, like you know, healthier individuals make better employees, make they, better managers, they raise make healthier better children, they appreciate education, they don't miss work. Uh, they're happier it's at right. work. More creative, yeah. more so, productive. Again, everybody knows this is really important, but one of the things we've been able to do, which uh, having lived in other states, I know how hard it is to get, let's say, medical schools to collaborate because yeah. it's a very competitive yeah. enterprise. And yeah. if you run hospitals, which we do, that's very competitive mm -hmm. too. So I'm very proud of the fact that our medical schools at Downstate and Upstate and Stony Brook and Buffalo and our optometry college in New York City are working yeah. together and yeah. they are that's prioritizing fantastic the diseases yeah. they're researching, which is what it's all about. You yeah. cannot yeah. light a thousand flames and think you're going to move the dial. And I also liked how you're collecting some information on where are the gaps in healthcare exactly. providers. Exactly. Where do we need them physically? What specialties do we need? And so you're, it's all data driven. You're doing yeah. the research and then you can, I mean, you can't force a student to go into a particular area of study or uh, specialty, but I think it's in, important to know that you know, in a particular rural area, we need right. X number, you know, X type of doctor and, and support that. It's more likely that a New Yorker is going to go to a SUNY medical school and then stay to live yeah. and practice here. Right. Uh, we have a lot of students from around the world that come to New York for medical mm -hmm. education, which is really important, but yeah. it is also really important. So our medical schools have actually tilted toward admission of New Yorkers so that oh. we're sure the urban and That's rural great. areas are going to have access. And back to diversity counts, yeah. uh, we're really a very diverse enterprise, particularly yeah. Downstate Medical Center mm -hmm. in Brooklyn is one of the, the most diverse medical schools in the country, and that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, you and I love how it's all woven, the diversity yeah. piece. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. what I wanted to bring out. Yeah. I know if, if, if any of our viewers wanted to go and read the about the six big ideas, they can go on to the SUNY website and yeah. look at the strategic plan. And what's really interesting about it is on every one of the ideas, there'll be how does diversity fit in with right. this. I've had a lot of experience as well forming diversity councils, offices of diversity and equity. Yeah. And what I think we were thinking is that it's very important to have designated leadership, but it's also important that everybody doesn't just assign diversity to one group and therefore say, not my responsibility, right. when it is everybody's responsibility. Yes. So uh, we have a, a board of trustees that's absolutely insistent that mm -hmm. we are uh, doing it this way, paying attention, and this is also where our uh, minority businesses agenda has come as well, so it's all of one cloth. That's yeah, fantastic. that's wonderful. And we touched on already the SUNY and, and Energy Smart New York. Is there anything else you want to say about that other than? 
Well, well I would about? say that our generation of students are the energy conscious people, and in some respects, if we would just listen to our students and what they know about mm -hmm. energy conservation, That's a good point. this yeah. is a case where the students are the teacher. Yeah. and how we uh, live in our residence halls, mm -hmm. uh, how we build buildings, and the big priority of uh, LEED certified buildings. This is all, let the students tell us. That's right. Uh, because they're a generation that totally gets it. Mm -hmm. So I would want to put a plug in. Yeah, we really owe it to point. our yeah. students. And, and, and I know it, our, I work at a community college, um, in Schenectady County Community College, and as we build, I know NYSERDA has been a wonderful yeah. partner oh, with us. Oh, they're a great partner. And this is really a huge priority. But again, because SUNY is so big mm -hmm. and uh, occupies a, a footprint that is huge, if we get some of this right, mm -hmm. uh, it's also what we were thinking about a uh, tobacco-free campus. Oh, I yeah. love it's, that. It's uh, controversial. It is. Uh, yeah. There are differences of opinion on how we might have gone about this, and we still have much work to do. But imagine what that will say to the communities where we reside. Uh, but one of the things I like about this is that it, it again transforms that whole ivory tower right you know that's mm. the student area right. this yeah. is the rest of the town kind yeah. of a thing mm -hmm. and I love how there's a um, you say the strong communities are, are at the heart of economic revitalization and I, I just think that's brilliant mm -hmm. well you know we've always universities have always said look we employ a lot of people they spend money mm. uh, we procure things we yeah. buy things mm -hmm. this is economic development and I think we've tried to take it a step beyond that and say well the vitality of the community we've got one of our campuses that's weighing the vitality of each of our counties against a set of met uh, oh. a criteria or indicators and they're going to feed this information back to the counties 62 of them to say yeah. here's what we found about what you can do better yeah. if we get more of our students faculty and staff into communities and quite frankly I would say I want to know what we're already doing we have not been able to document well mm -hmm. how many of our faculty are leading councils and boards and yeah. how many of our students are volunteering or mm -hmm. you know this concept of service learning which means that you embed the community outreach in course credit mm -hmm. yeah that's the coin of the realm in right. university. You yeah. have to accrue credits to graduate. Right. That's right. That takes, was a big movement at the high school level, yes, it, and it at is. least and, a few years ago. Well, yeah. and it still is, and I think students are showing the dimensionality of their personality by where they have volunteered. So mm -hmm. the vibrant community is a way cool idea, and we're working. I just, it's a sneak preview. We're working on something <laughs> we're going to go live on this fall that is really going to connect the cultural life of a student with mm -hmm. the cultural benefits of New York yeah. and uh, you're going to love it. You're talking about the SUNY passport? Just it a wasn't, little. It wasn't a strategic <laughs> plan so it is public knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how we're playing this out, how we're making opportunities, creating opportunities for our students and ultimately faculty and staff to uh, mm -hmm. have a better opportunity and access to arts, parks, recreation. So mm -hmm. that much I can tell, mm -hmm. but if we hadn't said the vibrant community, we wouldn't have come up with this yes. idea. Yeah. And again, I can't tell you how instrumental our students were in yeah. saying, you know, we really want more access to arts and culture. Can you help us? And right. lo and behold, we came up with a really cool idea. I, I, I love that, that that was acknowledged as a, as a barrier and well, that and there are incentives now to be recognized. There's a Carnegie a commitment to the engaged university, and you can actually present your credentials mm. as a campus, and you could qualify mm -hmm. to be designated uh, by the Carnegie as a, an outreach and engaged university. And you know, people like a goal. Yeah. They like to, yeah. and there's a president's honor roll for universities that are really engaged. But again, part of it is getting the data, being able to claim that this is not just talk, right. we Love. really are doing this, which is I think our big challenge because yeah. we've been more more talk than yeah. showing the proof, right. and that's really where we yeah, are. I know at the, at the federal level, there's a big emphasis on performance yeah. metrics and, yes. and, and, it, and the, the expenditure of public dollars, and not as an expenditure, but as an investment. Right. And when you start measuring results, it really kind of makes that transition to an investment, and it's great. Well, and we are working, SUNY is working hand in glove with the White House ah, uh, great. on the cost of college, mm. uh, making more transparent what it costs to go to college. 
uh, the president has introduced this know before you owe concept, a shopping Fabulous. sheet, yep. and uh, we're an early adapter. We're That's going to great. try to do this on every one of our campuses. Mm -hmm. And it's really to show people how do you calculate tuition, fees, mm -hmm. books, residence, uh, what parts can you get from Pell, uh, the tuition assistance program in New York, what can you get from that, what yeah. gap will there be, mm -hmm. how do you pay, if you also add to that loans, how do you pay it mm -hmm. back over what time, really a consumer protection perspective for college students and their families. Let's talk about SUNY in the world before we run out of time. Okay, great. Let's talk about SUNY in the world and that's, I loved you said, we will nurture a culturally fluent cross-national mindset and put it to work improving New York global competitiveness. Wow. wow. <laughs> it is a wow, uh, but you know, we could not leave this conversation without talking about the global imperative, the way in which New York businesses are scattered all around the world. The traditional way to think about this is more student exchanges, more faculty exchanges, but you know, not everybody can afford that, so how do we bring international to our campuses? Mm -hmm. How do we shorten the periods of time when you can study abroad? How do we, now we're uh, setting aside money for scholarships for study abroad. Mm -hmm. We're uh, documenting the partnerships with other universities around the world that matter the most to us. Mm -hmm. and we're just looking at many, many creative ways to help us all be international. I, I read once, you know, it does start with having a meal in a cuisine mm. foreign to your cultural mm. experience. Oh, okay. And that's sort of at the low rung, uh, having a roommate or someone on your floor from another country. And you work your way to spending six months in another country, but not everybody can do that. No. So mm -hmm. we've tried to shake it up a little bit. And again, uh, our accountability and our commitment to make sure we we're really talking about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So we have a new global center in the heart of New York City. Oh, uh, wow. It coordinates, it's called the SUNY Global Center, and it coordinates all of our global international efforts uh, around the state, and we're working with the United Nations and places where we ought to be a partner. That's mm -hmm. great. It's exciting. And, and higher ed is one of our largest exports here in New York State, is it I not? I love that you said that yeah. because we're talking increasingly that higher education is trade, yeah. that exporting uh, and importing, we import students, we export uh, ideas, and mm -hmm. it is a trade phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's precisely one of the approaches we've, we've yeah. taken. Yeah. And um, one of the things that uh, I loved about um, this piece is that it's really seeing New York as a, a player in the world, oh, you know, not sure. just the United States, mm -hmm. but New York it, it also. Well, and, you know, the greatest international city on the planet, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of pride in New York City is deserved, and we should talk that way, yeah. and how that spreads to the many international companies across the entirety of New York State. Mm -hmm. We ought to be at making this global a phenomenon a priority. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are out of time, oh, but goodness. what we'd love is if you would come back in a year or so and <laughs> uh, tell us how we're doing. Yes, <laughs> you hold us. And see, this is working. Hold you right. accountable. Well, yeah. I found your 2011 report card fascinating, Good. and I plan on keeping an eye on that yeah, and I'd just because I'm back. excited about what you. what you're up to and, and you have the admiration of both of us I can yeah. honestly Thank say. You. Native New Yorkers yeah. both yes. and uh, SUNY I'm alums. And I'm envious yeah. of you being a SUNY alum so yeah. if I had time I'd get myself a SUNY degree. Maybe not this year. Maybe they'll give you an honor. Hey, you can do distance education. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, being a part of this conversation, Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. Thanks for watching.